Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. We're going to be doing Unit 6, the definite integral as a limit of a Riemann sum. And this is, I think, the most difficult part of Unit 6. So you might want to take some notes. You want to, might want to walk through it and even watch it a few times because this shows up in the mobile choice ex part of the AP Calculus AB exam. And what this is doing is it's giving us a definition for what's called the definite integral. And we're doing that through the limit of Riemann sums. Just as we we took a, a look at uh, the definition of a derivative was was the limit of all of my tangent lines, right? The, the all of the little slopes to infinity. And so the same thing is a definite integral. The area between two points definitely is. Uh, a limit as a Riemann sum goes towards infinity, and so we want to kind of walk right through it. Uh, you can you remember we've done left and Riemann sums, and so you can see the left Riemann sum in, in summation notation the i begins at zero, uh, and we're doing n minus one. We're going all the way to that because we're doing from the left hand side, and we have delta x. And what is delta x? Delta x denotes the width of each rectangle. And so delta x is b minus a, your upper minus your lower limits, divided by n, the number of my rectangles that I'm actually doing. The xi, or x naught, denotes the right end point of each rectangle. And so x naught is equal to a, that starting point, plus your delta x, your width, times your i, times your i. And that kind of helps me when when we do f of x naught, f of x i. That is the height. That's the height of each rectangle. So what do, what 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 are we doing? Is we're doing delta x, which is the width, times the height f of x i, and we're adding them all up. And we've done that when we do left Riemann sums. Our right Riemann sums start at i is equal to one. We're going n is the number of rectangles we're doing, and again we're doing our width times our height. That is the area of all of our rectangles added up, added up. So let's let's give an example. Here uh, we want to approximate the area between the g of x and g of x is five over x plus two on the and the x-axis on the interval from one to seven. So we're going from one to seven. We're using nine equal subdivisions, and so we're doing a right Riemann sum, aren't we? So we know how to do this. We we take our from one to seven, we divide by nine equal sub subdivisions. We plug in each x value into my function. We find the height, don't we? And we add up all of our rectangles. We've done that. But what does it look like in summation notation? So remember, we're using a right Riemann sum here. And so the summation from i is equal to one of n delta x times f of x naught. And so I have to define what some of these things mean. Our n is our number of rectangles, which is nine, which is nine. We were taking a look at delta x. And what was delta x? Delta x was your b minus your a over your n. So what is your b? Your upper limit is seven. What is your lower limit? Is one over nine equal subdivisions. So we have six over nine or two-thirds. That's what our width is. Our width right here and here is our delta x, and that is two-thirds. Uh, hopefully that's making some logical sense here. Okay. And then we have, let's let's figure out what x naught is. What x naught is is a plus delta x times i. So a obviously is your uh, one plus your delta x is two-thirds times i, times i. And so we're now going to finish my right-hand Riemann sum definition as a limit. So we have our summation notation, i is equal to one. Our n is nine, our n is nine. Our delta x is two-thirds, and then we're doing f of x i. So we're going to be plugging this value, this value, in for my x, in my function. So we have 5 over 1 plus 2 thirds times i plus 2. And of course, we can clean this up a little bit, can't we? 
uh, when we clean this up, we have 9, we have i equals 1. And when we get common denominators right here, obviously I'm going to get 3 thirds right here, 3 thirds plus 2 thirds. Okay, and the 3 on the denominator of the denominator goes up to the numerator. And so what do we end up getting? We have 2 thirds times the 3 on the denominator to the denominator becomes 15. 15, and we have 3 plus 2i plus 2, and that is my value right there. That is my value right there. That's if you did that on your calculator, it would give you all of these rectangles added up together. All of these rectangles added up together. And so in summation notation. Okay, like I said, a uh, little bit difficult, a little bit difficult as we take a look. Now, if, if you can see, here I have, I'm changing the number of rectangles, aren't I? Here I have one rectangle, and my area is 28.8. Here I have 11 rectangles, and 27 rectangles, and 41 rectangles, and 100 rectangles. And you can see what is happening as we're approaching, as this, this value of the number of rectangles begins to increase towards infinity. As the limit, as this x approaches infinity, we are reaching the area. We're reaching the area. And our area is getting closer and closer and closer to 14, aren't we? 14. And so that is, or you could say 13.99, and so that is the area, uh, the definition of a definite integral. So let's kind of walk through what this looks like. Here we have our function is 1 fifth x squared, and we're going from, we're taking a look at the area of this function, 1 fifth x squared, from 2 to 6, from 2 to 6. And so let's kind of walk through it. We want to find what delta x is. Delta x is equal to our upper limit minus our lower limit, 6 minus 2, over the number of rectangles. So we have 4 over the number of rectangles. Our x naught, remember, is our x naught is our lower limit, a, plus delta x times i. So our lower limit is 2, plus, what's our delta x? Is 4 over n times i. Now we can plug this in to find f of x naught, f of xi. One fifth of xi squared is one fifth of two plus four over n times i squared. Hopefully you're you're tracking with me here. Which means my rectangle's area is equal to the summation of i equals one to n of two plus four i over n squared times one-fifth times four over n. That's what we just went over. That was the right-hand Riemann sum. Which means if this limit is going towards infinity of this function of Rn, then our definition of our area is the limit as n is approaching infinity. As we continue to have our rectangles go up towards infinity, i is equal to one to n 2 plus 4i over n squared times 4 fifths n. And that is the exact area. That's the definition of a Riemann sum, which is the definition of the definite integral here. So, bottom line. And you're like, bottom line. I left the bottom line a long time ago. Is the definition of an integral is this, a definite integral is from a to b of f of x dx is equal to the limit of n as n approaches infinity of the summation of my rectangles of delta x, the width, times f of x naught, which is the height. And that is the definition of a definite integral as a limit of a Riemann sum. So let's go through some examples. Okay? We want to kind of put this in some good, uh, good form to find our examples. So we, we're trying to find the definite integral of cosine of x dx from 2 pi, from pi to 2 pi, okay? Now, I know you're like, I know how to do the integral of cosine of x. It's, it's negative sine of, sorry, it's sine of x. It's sine of x. And then I can plug in sine of 2 pi minus sine of pi, and that'll give me the definite integral. I know you know how to do the definite integral. But we want to take a look at what the definition of a definite integral is when I have a limit of a Riemann sum. 
And so, what is my delta x? Remember, my delta x is my b minus my a over the number of rectangles. So what is my b? My b is 2 pi minus my a, which is pi over n, which ends up being pi over n. That is my delta x. That is my width. Now let's take a look at the x naught. Remember, what is the x naught? The x naught is a plus delta x times i. So what is your a? Your a is pi. Your delta x, we know, is pi over n times i. Everyone cool with that? Which means now we want to do the definition of this definite integral, which is limit as n approaches infinity of the summation of of i is equal to 1 to n, number of rectangles, of cosine of xi. What is xi? Is pi plus pi over n i times your delta x, which is pi over n. And that is the summation notation as we approach infinity of this definite integral. That's it. Let's take a look at this one. This one, we're going from 0 to 3 of the function of e to the x dx. Now I know, you're like, I know how to do this. The integral of e to the x is e to the x. And I can do this from 3 to 0. I can do e to the 3 minus e to the 0. And that gives me e to the 3 minus 1. I know you know how to do the definite integral. But we're not doing that right now. We're doing this as a definition of a, of a limit of a Riemann sum. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at what delta x is. Delta x is b minus a over n, which means 3 minus 0 over n, which is 3 over n. You guys cool with that? Yes, we're cool with that. Then we're going to find x naught. x naught equals a plus delta x times i. What's our a is 0 plus delta x is 3 over n times i, which means delta x is 3i over n. Now we're ready to do our definition of this limit. The definition of this limit. This is, sorry, the definition of this uh, definite integral, which is the limit as n approaches infinity of the summation of i equals 1 to n number of rectangles. And we have e to the xi, which means e to the 3i over n, times your delta x, which is over n. And so that is my value. That's my answer. I think let's take a look at one more example. One more example. Here we're taking the definite integral from 1 to e of natural log of x dx. So let's take a look at each one of our things. I, you can see I do it the same way every single time. I first find my delta x, which is b minus a over n, and write it out every time until you, you know how to do it. We have e minus 1 over n. That's my delta x. Then you're trying to find out your x naught. What's your x naught is a plus delta x i, okay? which is 1 plus e minus 1 over n times i. e minus 1 over n times i. Now we're going to do our answer, our definition of the limit of a Riemann sum. So limit as n approaches infinity of the summation i equals 1 to n. And what do we have? We have our f of x i, so natural log of 1 plus e minus 1 over n times i times our delta x, which is e minus 1 over n. And there we go. That is your answer. Hope this helped. This was, uh, like I said, this was one of the more difficult. Uh, unit 6, this is, I think, the most difficult thing, but you can get it down. Do it the same way every single time. Find your delta x, find your x naught, then plug it in your equation. Have a good day, guys. Bye.